Meatloaf is one of the greatest comfort food dishes of all time, and today I'm showing you how I like to make it. I'm gonna start by finely chopping a small white onion. You need the vegetables in the mixture for flavor and to add moisture, but no one wants to bite on a big chunk of onion or bell pepper in their meatloaf. Therefore, I like to finely chop everything. You can even put your vegetables in the food processor before adding them to the mixture. Next, I'll add a finely chopped bell pepper. I like to use about half a bell pepper. It's gonna add great flavor. That's all I really add for veggies. Sometimes I throw in a little bit of finely chopped celery, but always bell pepper and onion. You could also add some mushrooms if you want. Just be flexible here. Now for some added aromatic flavoring, I like to add a little bit of garlic, some fresh thyme and parsley. Since we're missing everything, it's just easier to do it all at one time. So I'm gonna add a few more flavor components to this before I add the meat because I don't like to overmix the meat. You've seen that tip before. So to this, I'm going to add a bunch of flavor, a little Worcestershire, a little bit of Dijon mustard, and some ketchup. Of course, we're gonna put that ketchup on the top in the end, but I like a little bit to go in here for some added sweetness, but not too much. So we've got our flavor ready. Now it's time for the moisture and binding part of our meatloaf. So I'm going in with two eggs, a little bit of milk, and then I use seasoned breadcrumbs. At this point, you can use sliced bread and let that soak in. That's the way my mama does it. My mother-in-law uses oats. That's also a popular binder. I'm just not as versed in using oats, so I just like the old school breadcrumbs, but I do use the seasoned breadcrumbs because flavor. You wanna give the breadcrumbs or whatever binder you're using a little bit of chance to soak in some of that moisture, so then it'll distribute evenly throughout the meat. I'm using two pounds of ground sirloin. You could use a ground round here as well. And then I add my salt and pepper right on top of the meat. Listen, when it comes to meatloaf, you've gotta use your hands before the comments start rolling in. Let me take my rings off. Just wanna be sure everything looks evenly mixed without over mixing it. All right, when you see it comes together, it's about good enough. I love the way a meatloaf bakes up in a loaf pan. My loaf pan gets way more use for meatloaf than it does for me making loaves of bread. I know that doesn't surprise you. You want to spray your pan with some cooking spray. You could also line it with a little foil or parchment. And then we're gonna form our meatloaf into the loaf pan. No loaf pan, no worries. You can form this into a loaf on a plain baking sheet. I like to get it going in my hands first. Pat the baby. And then form it into your pan. I like using a ground sirloin so you don't get so much shrinkage when it's cooking. The fattier meat that you use, the more it's gonna shrink when it's cooked because all of that water and fat that's in it comes out so it makes your meatloaf look a lot smaller. Now this will decrease in size a little bit as I bake it, but not too much because I went with the leaner sirloin. There it is, but we're not done yet. Gotta get to that infamous ketchup topping. In my opinion, meatloaf does need the ketchupy topping. And I like meatloaf a lot more as an adult than I did as a kid. I mean, I didn't hate it as a kid, but I think what I didn't love about it was my mom like just put ketchup on it. She might've even sweetened the ketchup with brown sugar, which is very popular for the topping, but I think that I think it was just too sweet for me. So the sweetness in the ketchup is enough sweetness for me. But to cut just that ketchup taste, a little secret ingredient here, a little balsamic vinegar, and a little Worcestershire. Cutting that ketchup taste just a little bit makes me love the ketchup topping. We are going to bake this at 350 degrees for about an hour. That's all it's gonna take. See you in a little while. Smells divine. Like any good hunk of meat, you wanna let it rest before we cut into it. We don't want all those juices to just pour out everywhere when we make our first slice, so I'm gonna let it rest while I get my sides. You ready to see what's inside? Oh yeah! Juicy, tender. I mean, come on, this plate just makes my heart 
happy. There is no better pairing than mashed potatoes with meatloaf. Now you can try to, you know, do something crazy like rice, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, I'm going right in. Just like mama used to make, only better. Sorry, mom. It is so tender that it literally almost melts in your mouth. You definitely should try this recipe. Oh wait, you thought this video was over? Let me show you how to use the leftovers. All right, listen, here's a little pro tip. When you've got your leftover meatloaf, go ahead and slice it and then you can freeze it in individual slices and pull out, you know, a slice at a time for a leftover dinner or a meatloaf sandwich. Here's how we're gonna do it. Get you some toasted ciabatta bread, a little spicy mustard, our leftover meatloaf. Heat it back up with some white cheddar. Top it with a little onion. Oh yes. Come on. What's your favorite way to use leftover meatloaf? This right here is mine. Mmm. That's good, y'all. You can thank me later. In the meantime, when it comes to my favorite meatloaf, you can cook that. <laughs> Good thing that was the final shot. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> Dead gummit.